Hello there everyone. Today we're going to talk to you about some legends of science and we're going to show you an object at first and you're going to be thinking Brady and Keith they always show us such great objects. Great objects. And then things are going to get a bit freaky and a bit weird and well not nice. Let's just see how we go. Let's start with a nice one first. Well it's kind of nice. Keith what is this? I'm going to open the box. It's our, Do, yeah. it's our favorite pastime on objectivity. Is what? it going to play music? No. Pretty much what it says on the tin, this is a lock of Isaac Newton's hair sitting on like, it looks like a little little pillow. A little it? plush cushion, yes. A little, little hair cushion. It's just again one of those personal mementos that people collected around Isaac Newton because he was so famous and they were passed on generation to generation. Now Isaac Newton had a colleague a uh, rival, a nemesis. Deadly enemy, certainly. Yes, they didn't get on. Uh, this is, of course, Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke. This year is the anniversary of the publication of Robert Hooke's great book, Micrographia. Now, very famously, there is no portrait of Robert Hooke around. Micrographia is the closest thing we have to it. We're going to put some pictures on the screen at the moment. These are a few images from Micrographia. It's currently on display as we're recording at the Royal Society up until December, but we've done a bit of a sneaky. We've taken it out of the display case. Now, I'm going to take the gloves off like I do when I yep. handle books. Here we go. Micrographia, super famous book. Let's go to a couple of particular pages here. Here we see a couple of images of hair that has been viewed under a microscope and what has Hooke then drawn these, Keith? Or? Yeah, so he initially drew each image and then they would be sent to an engraver and they would be produced as plates for this book. There's a fair chance this is Robert Hooke's hair. Why not? I mean, yes, I mean, he, he would simply have pulled a bit from his head uh, and viewed it under the microscope. He, he used what was around him uh, and therefore this is in the absence of a portrait, a genuine piece of Robert Hooke. We're about to send this off for conservation, so it's not in a terribly good state. Look at this. There we go. So we've got a giant louse there by the looks of it. Clinging on to a human hair, of course. A so, human um, hair. Mm. We don't know if this hair and louse came from Hooke's head. Could he easily have done. I'm going to stick with that. Okay. All right. Now this is a really lovely image that Keith's found for us here. We'll give you a few seconds just to admire its majesty and think about what it might be. Mm. Let's put people out of their misery, Keith. What is this that Hook is looking at through his microscope? This is uh, observing urine, urine by freezing. Yep. We have the original drawing just behind you there, Brady. So look at this. Here it is in micrographia, but here the hand-drawn version by Hook himself. I want that to sink in for people here. I mean, Micrographia is this famous book with all these incredible images that have been reproduced, but the hand-drawn originals seem to have been lost in the mists of time. People like Keith don't know where they are. But here, this is the only one that Keith knows of that has survived. It's a marvellous illustration in its own right. And of course, Hook doesn't just illustrate them. He's observing the structure of the urine, but the text continues down to item 15. He decides that he's going to be tasting several clear pieces of this ice. I could not find any urinous taste in them, but those few I tasted seemed as insipid as water. So he's almost disappointed his frozen wee doesn't taste like wee. Yeah, so he, he has invented the, the urine lollipop, if you like. <laughs> Science. Nice. So you might be thinking, Robert Hooke's going a bit crazy here. Could it get any worse? Mm. Well, it could, because there was another guy, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. This was another great microscopist of the time, doing amazing things. Yeah, he, he'd seen micrographia we think and he was rather inspired by that by the 1670s he's sending letters into the Royal Society about his own microscope observations we have uh, four volumes of Anthony van Leeuwenhoek's letters it's a huge decades worth of, of research the other thing he tended to send in uh, was specimens so he would send small packets of things that he wanted the Royal Society to observe <laughs> uh, and check uh, we're very happy that occasionally he didn't send packets of specimens uh, and that's probably the material we're about to talk about. Here we have a Van Leeuwenhoek article in Filtrans where we're actually finding out what he's doing. That is a that, great opening bad. line. I send some observations about spittle. Yeah. Now that I have your attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though my teeth 
are kept usually very clean. Nevertheless, when I view them in a magnifying glass, I find growing between them a little white matter as thick as wetted flour. In this substance, though I could not perceive any motion, I judged there might probably be living creatures. Basically, he's saying, I think my teeth are pretty clean. Yeah. But when I look closely, there's gunk between them. Exactly. And right. I reckon there's living creatures in there. There's great stuff in there, he thinks to himself. <laughs> He then starts looking at other parts of his body. Rather interestingly, he says here, I squeezed some black specks out of the thick of my own nose, which I saw to be bundles of hair. So he, he's removing bits of his body and looking at them under the uh, magnifying glass or, or microscope. Oh, hang on, what's this? I took the worms out of the noses. He's taking, what's that? What? Yeah. I, I, Snot? I don't know. It's, 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 it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. When we started this project together, I didn't think the day would come when I saw you look at me and say snot with such a straight face. I, I, I know. Weirdly, al although it, it sounds as if he's, he's talking randomly about gunk, he makes some really important observations. And one of the things Leeuwenhoek finds in that paste he finds between his teeth is what we think are observations of bacteria. So Leeuwenhoek is, we think, the first person to see bacteria under the microscope. And um, uh, th th this material might sound r rather horrible and random, but in the end, some genuinely big science comes out of it. There we go. I warned you at the start that things were gonna get a bit nasty, and they did. And although we're joking around, as Keith says, Hook, Van Leeuwenhoek, these people, really exploring all the gunk in their teeth and their blackheads and their hair are really leading the way to some really, really important science. And it's really interesting to look at. And it's also, in some ways, quite beautiful to look at as well. Just you've got a sec, James. Keith, what the heck is going on there? Hmm. What's this? So this is a scaly child. A scaly child. So it's not the weirdest thing we have in the collection, <laughs> but it's, it's getting there. A scaly child. What a fantastic book. We actually have a second picture of the Brady Puss mm -hmm. here because you have to take this in from every possible angle. That's what it must look like as a Brady Puss is slowly charging at you. It's a great looking beast, isn't it? Oh, look, they've done a little picture for every bone. Mm. So it's no longer known as this Brady Puss Giganteus. What do, we know the, what do we know these as now? What did the name kind of change to? The, the general um, uh, group of animals is, is Megatherium. Megatherium. Yeah. So you've got another treat for us. Can I grab it, Keith? Yes, do. Oh, by the way, Keith had this out waiting for me when I arrived today. Yeah. James, could you caption underneath just so we don't confuse the viewers? Separated at birth. <laughs>